Hello, everybody. And um, if uh, you are on Instagram, you'll see me look up because I am looking at um, my other camera for Facebook Live. I'm doing a Facebook Live at the same time. So apologies for that. Now, last week in my live workshops, uh, Dare to Create, we looked at uh, life, creating a life vision or a vision for your life or your business life if you're a creative an overall vision of what you'd like to have in your life. Now, from there, we need to work backwards to find out what uh, will get you to that vision. And the way to find that, to make that possible is to use goals. Now, of course, these goals need to be chunked down into projects and the projects then need to be chunked down into daily tasks. However, there are pitfalls and mistakes that may prevent you from uh, sticking to goals or to, from setting the right goals, even if you have a life vision. Now, my name is Elisa Di Napoli, aka Elisa Vulpes, that's my um, art name for my music, and I help creatives get their projects out into the world. Uh, so they can share their gifts, express themselves, and shine their own unique, unique light into the world, which is what I really care about. Now, why does it matter then to have goals that stick? I mean, it's pretty obvious, um, but why do we really need to look at it so closely? Well, because if you think about it, if you don't know the rules of how to build a house, say, you know, the foundation, how to set effective foundations for a house. Well, it won't get built. And you may build something that you actually really don't want, right? So here today, I want to give you some uh, solutions, some things to look out for, and especially uh, pointers to avoid the pitfalls of setting the wrong goals. So now, let's get started. First of all, you need to actually know what you want, right? Look at your overall life vision and then you can set your goals based on that. But if you don't know what you want, I would say get onto the Dare to Create week too for a live meditation on the subject. Otherwise, um, I'll give you some other pointers as well if you don't want to do that. Now, most people don't know what they really want and so they avoid setting goals altogether. But think about it, you know, if you don't put in the time and the effort to figuring out what you really want, well, you will never get anywhere. And when you don't set goals, you'll just drift. You'll drift in reacting to whatever life throws at you, or even worse, other people may set goals for you, and then you'll just go along with those goals. And this is a recipe for feeling unfulfilled, vulnerable, lost. No one wants that. I'm sure you wouldn't want that. Alternatively, you know, if you don't know what you want and you, for whatever reason, you don't want to try the guided meditation approach, you could do a couple more things. You could ask a friend to ask you, what's important to me in my music career, in my creative career, or in my life in general, okay? And continue through each area of your life. And ask your friend to keep on asking you, even when you think that you've discovered what uh, you value the most, because often the most motivating values you have are the most unconscious, the most, the least obvious. Another thing you could do is to experiment and try out different experiences. You're paying attention what, to what you really enjoy and what you don't enjoy as well. And ask yourself about each experience. What is it about this experience that I really liked? What is it about this experience that I really don't, didn't like? Because this will give you an idea of what you actually value. 
what excites you, what motivates you, and who you really are. And remember that there's no failure until you give up. So don't give up. Say to yourself, I'm going to persevere until I get a clear idea. Now, the other problem is that often we don't, don't have an idea of what we really want because our ego has no idea what would really satisfy our deepest needs. It may have heard ideas about money or fame or, I don't know, having uh, a book out or maybe it's more about having a family or achievement of some kind, recognition. And these are the ultimate goals that will bring happiness to you. And the ego believes the story. But the problem is, it's just a story. <laughs> And what makes somebody else happy is not necessarily what makes you happy. The, e the ego doesn't have any clue what would make you happy because only your deeper self knows that. And so once again, that's why I would suggest to do the meditation because that's a way to go beyond your rational mind and your ego into your deeper self. Now, some people would just allow their ego to attract to themselves what it wants, right? More money, uh, an album out, or appearance on TV, or loads of money, being uh, touring around the world, whatever it may be, right? And there is nothing wrong with wanting these things, by the way. If the request comes from you the, uh, yourself but if it if the request comes from your ego you may end up in trouble because you may actually get what you ask for and then this this <clears throat> you know the ego <laughs> tried to get you this stuff based on a dream a fantasy of what it, it of what getting that stuff would be like but often we don't actually have any idea of what it would really entail to get what we want and it might be absolutely the opposite so for example you know i used to think oh i really want to be like amanda palmer you know amanda palmer is great i want to do what she does but when i think about that well i'm sure amanda palmer does a lot of touring and actually do i want to do touring not really like the idea of touring might be interesting to me and when I, in general, but the reality of touring entails spending a lot of time on the road, away from my family, away from the people I love, maybe in a hotel room, not in my own room. I might be by myself. You know, that's not what makes me happy. It might be what makes somebody else's happy. So even if I get it because it's what I think I should get, I'm not going to be happy. Does that make any sense? So... The other thing is you need to ask for what you want rather than what you don't. And this is a biggie. This really is a biggie. Imagine that you are sitting in the middle of a dark theater. And then suddenly a spotlight appears. The only thing you can see is... Whatever that spotlight is shining its light upon, right? That is your reality. Now, you may think that that is reality with the big R. But the truth is that that's just a fraction of it. And you decide where to point that spotlight on. And wherever you point it to, that's what you're going to believe reality is. So the universe is just a mirror of who we are. And our external reality is a reflection of our internal reality. The world simply reflects back to you whatever you believe about it, whatever you believe about your place in it. Okay, so when you change your beliefs, your life changes 
and that's not because of some kind of magic and that's not because of the law of attraction it's just because of this principle of course you need to put into action take action as well but we'll get there now Let's get stay on. Are we getting? You know, are you getting the opposite of what you want? Because sometimes that ha that happens, right? And we all know what we don't want, and that's why often we actually get it. It's because we know it so well. You know, we all know we don't want to get fat or maybe poor. We don't want to be unfit and lonely and and ill and stressed out or unattractive right but when we focus our attention onto what we don't want we create a mental image of that very thing that we're trying to get away from and then we actually end up attracting exactly that which we are trying to avoid i mean have you ever had this sort of experience i certainly have and this is because again not some kind of magic it's because our subconscious doesn't understand negative language. You know, the classic example of someone asking you not to think about pink elephants. Don't think about pink elephant on top of a hill with a fire going on in the distance. What are you imagining? I bet you're imagining those pink elephants with the fire in the distance. And <laughs> the entire society that we live in is based on negative language don't drink and drive you know classic example and this is because you know what actually happens when you get what you don't want is that your subconscious is a goal striving mechanism and if you tell it what to do every time you imagine every time you say something to yourself you're actually imagining that very thing and your subconscious just wants you to get you there so instead of telling it what you don't want, you need to tell it what you do want. But if you're not used to it, if you always come up with, I don't want to be this, I don't want to be that, I don't want to be ignored, I don't want to be poor, I don't want to be whatever it is, unhealthy, then ask yourself, what do you want instead? What would you rather have instead? Because that's a, a good, easy way to turn it around. Another way of explaining this concept I like to use is that imagine that you are the captain of a ship that's sailing on a deep, wide, open ocean and you've got a crew and the crew follows your order to the letter, right? You just need to tell the crew where you want it to go. But instead of telling your crew where you want to go, you keep on telling it where you don't want to go. So you say, you say, I don't want to go to Hell Island. Oh, Hell Island, I hate it. It's full of terrible people. There is nothing to eat. Everybody hates me there. The weather is terrible. There's no music. I don't want to go to Hell Island. Please don't take me there. And what does the crew hear? The crew hear, he cre hears Hell Island, Hell Island, Hell Island. It doesn't know where else to take you. So it takes you there and that's where you end up going. Does that make sense? So stop asking for what you don't want. Stop imagining what you don't want and focus on the opposite. What would you rather have? If this makes sense, leave me a comment on this, right? Or if it doesn't, leave me a comment on this. <laughs> and finally, set your own goals uh, what with that i what i mean is are you being influenced especially for those of you who are young or younger than me uh, but this you know can happen to someone that's even that older as well if your parents for example always wanted you to be a doctor they didn't want you to be a musician or a writer or something like that. You know, maybe they didn't never had an opportunity to understand what it's like to be a creative person. 
Well, maybe you may say to yourself, well, sure, I'm a musician, but um, I'm a writer, whatever, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also get a degree in medicine because, you know, that's what they want and I want to make them proud. I don't want to disappoint them. I better have a plan B. The problem with plan B is it makes plan A impossible. And eventually you will become the motivated. You're not going to be truly engaged with what you are doing. Sooner or later, it's going to creep in. You're trying to live up to another person's expectation of who you are instead of being true to who you actually are. And your subconscious, it's going to resist in some way. Sooner or later, you may go ahead with it because your your desire to please your parents is bigger than it's it's bigger than your desire to be true to, to who you are maybe your fear is stronger at the beginning but eventually eventually you will begin to sabotage yourself because you don't really want what they want you to be and so then you're gonna have to change course anyway so you're gonna have all this time that you could have spent doing what you actually do like right and so it's important to examine in detail what is truly important to you you know quite apart from what others want you for you or think you should be if you don't your goals will be influenced by other people's opinion your peers your parents your family your partner the media any anything so you need to care enough about your goal in order to have enough energy to push through the obstacles, the inevitable challenges along the way. So there's no point in doing something you, your heart that that you know that you don't have your heart in. Because let's face it, nothing is easy. Every goal requires a lot of energy, determination to overcome the obstacles. So why waste energy trying to be? Or get something that you don't really want when you would have much more energy if you put it all your effort towards some achieving something that you get excited about right okay finally there's a couple more things and I'm actually thinking maybe I should stop here because there's, there's a few more things, but I don't want to overwhelm you. And if you want to know more, I would invite you to come back next Thursday. I'm going to uh, talk about setting, still setting smart goals. So come back next Thursday, 7 p.m. Uh, UK. Today I got the, the timing right because we changed clocks. Um, but also, if you want something more practical, something more... Oh, here we go, Charlotte. Um, um, if you want something more practical, then uh, I would suggest you come to the um, daretobeseencommunity.com, join us, it's free. And on Sunday, we're going to be uh, looking at a practical application of all of these concepts. Uh, there is a lot more to talk about, uh, so stick around because every Thursday we'll keep going a little bit deeper and I just didn't want to go uh, for too long today, um, but there's a lot more to talk about and there's a lot more to do and because this is not just about talking about things, but it's about actually get getting things done for real. So join me next week on thursday 7 p.m uk for another facebook live and another instagram live um or and come to the dare to be to the dare to create workshop on sunday 7 p.m uk again and join the community at dare to be seen community.com so i hope this was helpful if so please do let me know um because <laughs> that keeps me going and that's all for tonight. Thank you. Bye-bye.